If you don't know already, my name is Big Sick you, and today we're going to be making basic apple cider. So, what we're going to be making it with, the cheapest apple juice you can find from Concentrate. Get the cheapest stuff, don't buy expensive. So as well as the apple juice, you're also going to be putting in yeast nutrient okay that's going to help the yeast that you're about to put in as well multiply and eat the sugars which will create alcohol here's the wine yeast in this case wine yeast super compound this is designed for high alcohol get yourself one of these this is a five litre water container you can buy them in a supermarket or your local homebrew store might sell them. If you buy them from a supermarket, all you need to do is buy it with the water in it and then throw the water away and you've got a sterile fermentation vessel, which is what this is, an FV, fermentation vessel. So, once you've got this, and this is one I got earlier, that's why I've got sterilizing fluid in mine, all we need to do is pour apple juice into it and a couple more things. Right, so we've got our three ingredients. Apple juice, yeast nutrient and wine yeast super compound. Right, so all we're going to do is pour the apple juice into this. Okay, so the juice is in there. Now, the next ingredient is yeast nutrient. So we're going to put one teaspoon of this into our four and a half litres of juice. Now if you can't get your hands on any yeast nutrient, it's not essential, but it does help. So now, I'm going to put my wine yeast in. Whilst I'm using wine yeast, super compound, if you want to, you could use a dedicated cider yeast, you could use an ale yeast, you could use a champagne yeast. It's really up to you, but for the purposes of this demonstration, we're using wine yeast super compound. Right, now I've put that in. Take the top of your five liter container. Give it a shake, baby. Right, and that's all shaken up. So to recap, we have apple juice from Concentrate, we've got yeast nutrient, and we've got wine yeast super compound in this five liter water container. But there's only four and a half liters of apple juice in here. Right, so all we need to do now is leave this in a relatively warm place, room temperature, for about a week. When you put your lid on for fermentation, only ever just sit it on. You want gas to be able to escape from there. Don't want any exploding demijohns. Let's skip forward a little bit because after a few hours you're going to notice there's a foam, a thick foam, that's formed along the top. That's perfectly normal. Let's go and have a look right now. Okay, so it's been 24 hours now. And as you can see, there's a foam on top of the cider. And also, you'll see all the little yeast cells in there starting to 
propagate. And what they're doing is they're dividing and multiplying and they're going to then start to eat the sugars proper. So what will happen is all of this on the top will sink down to the bottom and then it'll start to eat the sugar and you'll see what looks like fizzing coming up from the bottom as the carbon dioxide escapes. The reason I've got this on it, well that's for keeping it warm but also to keep the light from my kitchen window going through this clear plastic because that can affect the flavour. It's now 48 hours later and you'll see that the, the foam is thicker on top and also now fermentation proper has begun. There we go, so that's what it looks like. All these little bubbles is CO2 and that is being produced by the yeast at the bottom. They're eating the sugars and they're making alcohol and the byproduct of that is carbon dioxide. And there we are. Right, so here we are a week later. Here's the cider. So as you'll see, there is a little bit of yeast left around the top. That's called the Croizen ring. And as you should be able to see, it's starting to get clearer at the top. And as we go down, it's pretty murky at the bottom. And also at the bottom, you should see that there's sediment right on the very bottom. <coughs> so what's happening there is, the yeast has metabolised, big word, the apple juice and has made carbon dioxide and alcohol. And in doing so, the proteins and fats, minimal though they are in apple juice, have been fined out and have fallen to the bottom along with the dead yeast and live yeast as well. So that's it. We've made cider. Let's pour some out and drink it. So there's the cider. Now I haven't carbonated it, but it smells like cider, it tastes like cider. This is obviously going to be very dry because the yeast has eaten all of the sugar in there. If you like yours a little sweeter, then you could use some artificial sweetener, perhaps stevia or anything you can get your hands on. But if you use sugar, remember sugar will be eaten and will make carbon dioxide and alcohol. If you want to carbonate it, get yourself some bottles like this. These ones are specifically for home brew, Cooper's home brew. But if you can't get these, then any bottle that has previously contained pressurised liquid, Coke, 7-Up, whatever it happens to be. And all you do is put a teaspoon, a level teaspoon, not heaped, into the bottom of your bottle. Boom. Fill it up with cider. Give it a shake. And leave that for about a week again and it'll carbonate and you'll have fizzy cider. And if you want it to be fizzy and a little sweeter than it tastes when you take out the primary fermenter, just add a teaspoon of sugar and a teaspoon of whatever sweetener you're going to use as well. So there we go, people. That's how easy making cider is. Boom.